Welcome to Herds of Faith. We're so glad that you've joined this broadcast this morning. And, you know, I hope you're staying uh, warm at home. And, uh, and we're speaking uh, just peace over you and safety over to you. And, and just wanting you to know from our hearts that we miss gathering together. We know the power that happens when we gather together in one place. But also I'm grateful for technology that uh, I get to be able to release and deposit a few nuggets into our hearts on a Sunday morning, even though we might not be able to gather together. And so I want to pray as we begin this, our time together this morning. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. And I just thank you for the Heritage of Faith family. And I thank you as we, gathered, uh, gathered, as we gather online today. I thank you that you quicken us by your word and by your spirit. Lord, I just speak forth healing, uh, wisdom, strength grace and peace to just overwhelm every every home on this Sunday morning or whenever they might be watching it. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, I'm glad that you joined us today. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has something specific for each one of our hearts. You know, 2021 is a year of abundant overflow. Can you say that with me? 2021 is a year of abundant overflow overflow. That's what we're holding on to as a church. That's what I'm holding on to as a father, as a husband, as a believer. I believe it is God's will and it is God's purpose for us to step in to the abundance that he has for us. You see, abundance is God's heart. We know from the word, it says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But God says, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. He desires abundant life in every area of our lives. You know, I'm so grateful for the miracles that are happening here at Heritage of Faith. I believe we're seeing the abundance, the abundance of God's power, the abundance of God's grace, the abundance of God's provision, even in the midst of pandemics, even in the midst in difficult times, even in the midst of great division within a na- in our nation. I believe at Heritage of Faith, we have seen and are seeing great things. Even last week, some of the miracles that we saw and even testimonies that we're hearing continuing to hear about what happened last week in the Richard Roberts service. I want to encourage you, send us those testimonies. And I believe those testimonies will build other people's faith. And I believe this morning, even during this time that you're watching and we're not gathered in one place, I believe that the power of God is present to heal. That's what it said in Jesus's day. It said, as the word was being preached, it said the power of the Lord was present to heal. And I believe that's no different in our day. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Can you give him a shout of praise right where you are? Amen. No, you can do better than that. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. Well, I want to read the prophetic word uh, to us, the one that was given to us back in October from uh, Dr. Savell. It says, a new era has begun and more and more signs and wonders will be seen in 2021. For those who will heed my voice and obey my words, they'll experience my goodness and my power is never seen nor heard. They'll see the fruit of their faithfulness come bursting forth and they'll prosper and flourish like never before. Isn't that amazing that your faithfulness will come bursting forth? It says abundance and overflow. That's what they'll see. I'll bring it to pass because of their love and their obedience to me. No longer will their enemy have the upper hand for my spirit is moving and an outpouring of my power is coming upon the land. Many triumphant victories will mark this new era. It's what I plan. So rest in me. Miracle after miracle. That's what I'll do. Decree it and receive it and know that it's true. Can you say that? Miracle after miracle. That's what I'll do. Decree it and receive it and know that it's true. Can you say that? Miracle after miracle. I don't, I'm inviting the miracles of God in my life and I'm inviting the miracles of God in your life. Amen. It says this, it says, refuse to be swayed by what's said in the news with me on your side. How can you lose? So stay with my word. It's faithful and true. I'll bring it to pass and great things I will do. Yes, a new era is here. It's already begun. And I plan marvelous things for 2021. It says abundant overflow is the order of the day. So rest assured it's on its way. Your adversary can't stop what I've already decreed. So stay in faith and get ready to receive. Allow no one to discourage you by what they say. Keep looking to me and I'll have my way. Tell my people they'll need to remain strong and stay close to me so they'll not be deceived by their enemy. 
His attacks will intensify and they'll try to prevail. But my power is greater and it shall not fail. Fear not nor be fretful over whatever shall come. The battle is mine and I've already won. Contrary to what you'll see and what you shall hear, 2021 will be a year, be a great year. A year of abundant overflow. That's my plan and it shall be so. You see, I'm inviting abundant overflow into my life because I believe that's the will of God for me. And I believe it's the will of God for your life. And I believe it's the will of God for this church. You know, I've been meditating and praying over some things. And there were some things I was planning on preaching at the 9 o'clock service, uh, you know, tomorrow. Or we were doing this on Saturday. But, uh, you know, things that I was going to share. And, and I'm going to hold on to those things. But there's some other things the Lord deposited in my heart this afternoon. And we can, we can find these things in Ephesians chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Because I believe this is so important for us as we, as we embrace this prophetic word. Because we can say the prophetic word, we can quote it, we can repeat it, but yet still not totally understand or not totally embrace what God wants us to embrace. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. See, this is the Apostle Paul's prayer, and he's praying for the church, and he wants something to happen. He wants the church of Ephesus to receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation. He wants them to obtain wisdom and he wants them to get revelation. When you get revelation, you see something that you haven't seen before. The root word to revelation is revealed. And when you have revelation, it means something has been revealed to you. Something has been revealed to me. And see, we can talk about abundant overflow, but not totally receive, not totally have a revelation of all that that might mean for my life. So Paul's prayer was, Father, give them. Father, give them a wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let me read it again. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory. So the father of glory would give unto them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So here he's praying. I'm praying that your eyes would be open. I'm praying that you would have revelation of the knowledge of him, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I believe that our eyes need to be open, our ears need to be open, and our hearts need to be open to all that God wants us to walk in. I believe he wants each one of you to operate and to walk in abundant overflow. But for that to happen, our eyes need to be open to it. We need to totally get a revelation where we know that we know that we know that we know that abundant overflow is God's will for my life. The next verse says this, then it says this, the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to, to the working of his mighty power. So in this prayer, he's saying that would you would give them wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then he says that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. I want your eyes to be enlightened this morning. I want your eyes to be open to some things this morning. And what is Paul praying and what does he want their eyes to be open to? It's three different things. The first thing was the hope of his calling. That means that that Paul's saying, I want them to have an expectation about the hope of God's calling, the hope of their calling, the hope of what God's calling them to, the hope and expectation to what is theirs. The next thing is their eyes to be open to the inheritance that they have in the saints. You have an inheritance. 
You have an inheritance. You, you may not have received, ever received a natural inheritance in your life, but I want you to know in the kingdom of God, you have an inheritance. And then it says this, that your eyes would be open to the exceeding greatness of his power. You, I believe if we're going to step in to everything that abundant overflow is for our lives, I believe our eyes need to be open to the hope of his calling, the inheritance of the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power. You see, God is unlimited. God has no limitations. I want you to know that God's power is is without limits. God's ability is without limits. All things are possible. All things are possible to him that believes. And our eyes need to be open to all that God wants to accomplish in our lives. In Psalms chapter 78, verse 41, it it tells us about the children of Israel. And it tells us that they turned back and they limited the Holy One of Israel. You see, this scripture is always fascinated to me because because the scripture says that the people, God's people, had the ability to limit a God that had no limits. I wrote something down here. It says, when the Israelites were approaching their new land, they had guidelines, but they had no limits. It says this, they knew their borders and they knew it was a land of milk and honey, but there were no limits to what God would do for them if they would follow after and obey his voice. I want us to know this morning, there are no limits of what God wants to do for you. There's no limits of what God wants to do for you in this new era, but it's going to take following after him and obeying his word and obeying his voice. I want our eyes to be open to the hope of his calling. I want our eyes open to the inheritance that we have as believers. And I want our eyes open to the exceeding greatness of his power. You know, I don't know how God's going to bring about abundant overflow in my life or your life, but I know that I know that I know he's going to make it happen. I believe as I align myself with his word, as I believe as I align myself with the spirit of God, as I obey his word and obey things that he's telling me to do, I know that I will step into the abundant overflow that's been made available for me. And I believe that you will step into that same abundant overflow in your life as well. I believe it's God's heart. I believe it's God's desire that we operate in abundant overflow. You see, we have the ability to limit a God that has no limits. I think about, uh, you know, the, the, the people that, the, that Jesus was talking to, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and I believe as he was talking in Matthew chapter 15, it's, he, he t- tells them, he says that you, he says this, he goes, you make my word ineffective because of your traditions. He says, because of your traditions, You make my word void. You make my word ineffective. And I believe that we can have traditions in our life, habits, addictions, mindsets, paradigms, deceptions, different things and mode of ways that we've lived in the past. And I believe those things can limit the word of God from working in our life. Let go of every limitation. Let go of everything that may have held you back. Let go of every, every sin. The word says lay aside every weight and sin that would so easily beset us. Let those things go because God has greater things for you in this new era. God has greater things for each one of us in this year of abundant overflow. If you have your, if, go to John chapter one, John chapter one. John chapter 1, I want our eyes open to abundant overflow. I want your eyes open to the hope of his calling. I want your eyes open to the inheritance that we have in the saints. I want your eyes open to the exceeding greatness of his power. In John chapter 1, verse 6, it says, 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Now think about that. He was in the world. The world was made by him and the world didn't know him. Now think about this. We're, now we're talking about, we're talking about Jesus we're talking about, we're talking about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And we know in verse 14, it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So what is he saying here? He is saying he was in the world and the world was made by him. See, that's talking about power. That's talking about God's creative power. Here he was in the world, but yet the world didn't know him. He was in the world, but the world didn't know him. He was in, he was the one that created the world, but yet the world didn't know him. And then it says this. It says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. So the same one that created everything and the world didn't know, he came to his own and the world didn't receive him. So that lets me know that I can be around I can, I can be around, I can know of, I can, I can be acquainted with, and I can, I can be around the one that can do impossible things, but not receive him. I can be in the, around the one that, that created everything, but yet not know him. I can be in church, I can, I can carry a Bible, I can, I can, I can walk through life, I can, I can have the name label Christian upon my life, but yet still really not truly know all that's available to me as a believer. See, our eyes need to be open to all that's available to us as believers. God has amazing things for each one of us, so let's take the limits off. Let's take the limits off the things that would take off the things that would hinder us from stepping into all that God has for us. It says he came to his own and his own didn't receive him. But then it says this, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But as many as received him. To them, he gave power to become sons of God. I want you to know, because you've received him, as you've received him, he's made you, he has given you the power to become the sons of God. He's given us the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you believe on his name? Do you believe on his name? And that means he's given you the power to become a son of God. I want your eyes open to that revelation. I want your eyes open to the revelation that you and I are sons of God. Why? Why abundant overflow in my life? Because I'm a son of God. Why abundant over? Why miracle after miracle? Because I'm a son of God. Why blessing after blessing after blessing, greater victories after victories, many triumphant victories you will see. Why? Because I'm a son of God and I have a right to it and my eyes are open to it and I want your eyes open to it as well. We have something to be joyful about today. We have something to, to hold our head up high today because you and I, because we believed on him, we are sons of God. Verse 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. I mean, I became a son, not because I was born into it because of blood. I'm not a son because I willed it or, or, I, or I chose it or I pursued it in, the, in my own ability or my own flesh. And it wasn't because of the will of man. But it was because of the will of God. So this being a son of God has nothing to do with, with me doing something. But has everything, it has everything to do with me stepping into what God desires. 
You being a son of God is God's desire for your life. You being a daughter of God is God's desire for God's desire for your life. Let your eyes be open. I want your eyes open that you are a son of God and that you are a daughter of God. And because of that, you have the ability to live life without limitations. You have a right to abundant overflow. You know, in Romans chapter 4, I love the story in Romans chapter 4, and it talks about Abraham. And we know that God called we call, he called him Abraham, meaning the father of many nations. And every time God called him Abraham, he was saying, father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations. And it tells us in Romans four seventeen, it says, and God calleth those things that be not as though they are. So he was calling Abraham father of many nations long before Abraham was ever a father of many nations. Every, ever before he was walking in the fulfillment of that promise. And it said that, it said Abraham was fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. And I want you to know today that you are a son of God. And I want you to be fully persuaded that you are a son of God. I want you fully persuaded that you're a daughter of God. I want you fully persuaded in the power of God. I want you fully persuaded in the the fact that you have inheritance as a believer. I want you fully persuaded in the fact that you are walking in abundant overflow in 2021. I want you to give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Because you need to be fully persuaded that this is a year of abundant overflow and you need to be fully persuaded that you are a son of God and you are a daughter of God. Just as much as Abraham was fully persuaded that he was the father of many nations, I want you to be fully persuaded that you are a son of God. Amen. You may not feel like it. You may not realize it. You may not, you, you may not uh, have it totally embraced it. It may be a foreign concept to you. You may be totally overwhelmed by sin in your life and totally overwhelmed by your past mistakes, but I want you to call things that be not as though they are. And I want you to embrace the fact that you are a son of God. You are a son of God. Hallelujah. And Romans tells us in Romans chapter eight, verse 17. And he goes, if we are children, then we're heirs. If we're children, then we're heirs and we're joint heirs with Christ. I want you to know this morning, hallelujah, I want your eyes open that you are a son of God, that you are an heir of God and you are a joint heir with Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You see, you are a son of God. And because you're a son of God, you have rights. Remember that, that phrase that Paul said, their eyes would be open to the inheritance that we have in the saints? An inheritance. That inheritance has everything to do with the fact that you are made a son. That inheritance has everything to do that you've been brought into the kingdom of God, brought into the family of God. That, that inheritance has everything to do with who you are. You are righteous. That, that, that inheritance, that inheritance is the fact that you can come boldly to the throne of grace. That inheritance, that inheritance is that you, that your old, old man is gone and you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. You have an inheritance. In that inheritance is blessings. In that inheritance is, is the promises of prosperity. In that, in that inheritance is promises of healing and wholeness. In that inheritance is, is new life. In that inheritance is victory. In that inheritance is deliverance. And, and in that, in that inheritance is, is every aspect of being set free from every bondage. It's your right. I want your eyes open this morning. I want your eyes open today to the hope of his calling. What is that calling? That you're a son. What is that inheritance? That you're a son and daughter. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? It's walking in the fullness of what sons and daughters have a right to. Thank you, Father. I speak forth his ability and his power. 
working in your life. He gives you the power to become sons of God. There's nothing he is withholding from you. There's nothing that he's keeping back from you. There's nothing. There's not one thing that he is holding back from you. Everything's been made available through Jesus. You know, there's something that Dr. Snell ministered, and it was his word for 2005. And this word, 2005, stuck with me. If you have your Bible, go to 1 Corinthians, and I'll close with this in just a moment. And I'm going to talk on this the, the next time I have an opportunity to minister on a Sunday as well. And, and this, is, this is so important because it has to do with this aspect that our eyes being open to all that's been made available. Our eyes open to this fact that we're sons of God. And in that word that Dr. Zell spoke in 2005, and that word that he had was the word was Focus. The word was focus. And he gave us an acronym back in 2005. And I believe that this, this, that word then is just as prevalent today. And the acronym for focus was this. Fixed on Christ's unlimited supply. Fixed on Christ's unlimited supply. You see, when I made Jesus the Lord of my life, I am now found in Christ. My life is found in him. And because I'm found in him, there is an unlimited supply. An unlimited supply of joy, an unlimited supply of wholeness, an unlimited supply of victory, an unlimited supply of provision, of wisdom, of strength, Woo, a peace fixed on Christ's unlimited supply. So today and in the weeks to come, I'm going to be talking about that being fixed on Christ's unlimited supply. Abundant overflow. Let your eyes be open. Let your eyes be open. And being fixed on Christ's unlimited supply. I really believe that's what the Apostle Paul, his prayer was. I believe that was his prayer to the church of Ephesus because all those things had to do with giving them a wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. So it's our eyes being open to him. And when our eyes are open to him, let our eyes be fixed on his unlimited supply. Stop, stop allowing your eyes to be fixed on your limited supply and let your eyes be focused on his unlimited supply. I want to close with this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. It says, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. So he's talking to the church. And I believe just as much I could say to the church of heritage of faith. Unto the church of heritage of faith, which is in Crowley, Texas. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Are you sanctified in Christ Jesus? Then th this, this, is, this is for you. Called to be saints. Are, are you saints this morning? Then it says this. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Both theirs and ours. So we know he's not just t talking about the, the church in Corinth. But he's talking to all the saints. Not only that, but he's also talking to all them in every place that call on the name of Jesus Christ. Do, do we call on the name of Jesus Christ? That means he's talking to you and me today. He's talking to you today. Amen. This scripture is just as much for you and I today as it was for to those that Paul wrote it to. Hallelujah. It says this with all that in every place that call and that call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Now, before I go any further, remember what John chapter one said, that he gave them power to become sons of God. The last thing was, and to all those that believe on his name, to all those that believe on his name. So right here, it says into both theirs and ours that it says to those that call upon his name. So you're going to call upon the name that you believe in. So that means he's talking to those that are sons of God. So this is talking to you and me this morning. So what does he want us to know? Grace be unto you. Grace be unto you. 
His unlimited supply unto you. God's grace is his ability working in your life. And I want you to know that his grace is without limitations. So he wants our eyes open to this. Grace be unto you. His power unto you. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Grace unto you. Grace unto you. Peace unto you. Verse 4, he says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God. He says it again, the grace of God. I'm so thankful for the grace of God on you today. That's his, that's his ability. That's his favor. It's part of his unlimited supply. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given unto you by Jesus Christ. That in everything you're enriched by him. In everything. In, can you say that? In everything, in everything you are enriched in him. If you're enriched in something, that means you are fully capable that means that you, you, you are enriched. You, you are full. You're, you're satisfied. You have full supply. If you are enriched in something, then you are full of something. So he says that in everything, in everything you're enriched by him. See, this is talking about being in him. When you're in him, you operate and live with an unlimited supply. In all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift. You come behind in no gift. You're not lacking any gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, because we're sons, and we're sons, and because we're sons, we're in Him. And because we're in Him, we have his grace and we are enriched in everything. We come behind in no gift while we're waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means we are abundant. We are abundantly supplied. I believe abundant overflow will flow in our lives in 2021 as we keep our eyes fixed on his unlimited supply. I'm so grateful for his, his, that I've seen his unlimited supply in my life. Even when I came up against brick walls, even when I came up against things, even when I, I fell and had to get back up, I'm so grateful that as I got up, I was able to count on. I'm so grateful for his unlimited supply in my life. And I'm so grateful for his unlimited supply in your life this morning. So let's fix our eyes. My prayer this morning was that your eyes would be open to him in all that he is. But I want our eyes to be fixed. What does fixed mean? It means a steady, absorbing gaze, meaning our eyes are placed on him. Don't, don't look to the left or look to the right, but look straight on with fixed purpose. Keep your eyes on Jesus today. Keep your eyes on Jesus tomorrow and the day after that. It doesn't matter what it might look like in your life right now, but I believe as you keep your eyes fixed on his unlimited supply, we will see abundant overflow. We will see miracle after miracle. Miracle after miracle. Now think about this as I close. When Jesus came out of the wilderness, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And to heal the broken heart. And he goes on. And he goes on. He talks about and preach the acceptable the year of the Lord. And what does that mean? A year of freedom. I want you to know that as we keep our eyes fixed on him, we will walk in, I believe, great, greater anointings. We will walk in the power of God. We will operate and we will see great victories. We will see the miraculous in our life. We will see, we will see the fulfillment of the word of God in our lives. We will see amazing things. And I believe, I believe you will see them too. We will see them as a church. And I'm telling you, we are gonna see the miraculous in this church. We're gonna see God do great things in your life. 
but keep your eyes fixed on his unlimited supply. I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm so glad that you're part of our family. Uh, and I believe that God's, God's continued to do great things in each one of our lives. Let's continue to press in to abundant overflow. Let's continue to press in to the miracles, the greater outpourings that God wants to accomplish. We love you so much. I believe that you're going to have a super awesome week. And we love you. And don't forget, give them Jesus.